Hi guys, welcome to my channel Subhashar's classes. Today we are moving towards class 11 physics and in this section we are going to cover the law of linear momentum. So, law of conservation of linear momentum and what is this? The linear momentum of a system of bodies remains constant if there is no external force acting on the system. That means, when we are talking of an isolated system, an isolated system is a system detached from the rest of the universe or it is a system where there will be no nothing external force acting on it. So, if there is uh, an isolated system means there is no external force acting on it, then the total linear momentum that is being caused there the total linear momentum will remain constant or, or will not change at all. So, when Newton's second law and third law were proved, they led towards a very great principle which is law of conservation of linear momentum. So, law of conservation of linear momentum is nothing but a an extended or a generalized statement having a practical application. Law of conservation of momentum is actually a statement led from the Newton's second law and third law. What is Newton's second law? This law represents the fact that whenever there is no external force on a system of bodies, there will be no change in its state of motion which is in the first law. But as there is a change in momentum, there must be a force that means, a, an external force causes a change in linear momentum. If there is no change in momentum, then there will be no force which is also in the first law. So, since we know that second law contains all the three laws, the first law, the second law and the third law which is the prime law of Newton's laws of motion. So, let us discover where is Newton's second law in defining law of conservation of linear momentum. As you know in an external, if there is no external force on an isolated system, then what will happen? There will be no force that means, the force will be equal to 0. If the system is isolated, the force acting on it is 0. So, if force is 0, so as you know m a mass into acceleration should be equal to 0 if mass into acceleration is equal to 0, what is acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but the dv by dt factor or change in velocity with time. So, m into dv by dt should be equal to 0. The definition of acceleration is change in velocity with time. So, if m dv by dt as you know from the laws of calculus, when there is a constant, we can write this thing as a d m v by d t is equal to 0, because mass of a particle is constant throughout the motion mass remains constant. The velocity changes, but the mass does not change. So, d by d t of m v that means, change of m v factor with time is 0. What is m v? m v is product of mass and velocity which is momentum. So, we can say d p by d t is 0 that means, the change in momentum is 0. If change in momentum is 0, then according to law of calculus, the derivative of a constant is 0. So, that means, p is constant. So, from the, the definition of isolated system, an isolated system has no external force on it, means force is equal to 0. Now, we are going through the Newton's second law of motion and reaching here, the total momentum is constant. And what is the total momentum of a system of bodies? Let us consider there is a system of bodies having different masses m 1, m 2, m 3, there are n particles, each one is having different mass m 1, m 2, m 3 up to m n. Suppose, these uh, particles are moving with different velocities say v 1, v 2, v 3 up to v n, then what will be their momenta? 
what will be the momentum of these bodies the first one will having we can say p1 is m1 v1 p2 is m2 v2 and similarly pn will be mn vn so what will be the total moment of the system the system is having n different bodies particles each one is having different velocities and each one is having different momenta so total momenta p should be equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 up to pn which is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus up to mn vn now we find that the total momentum of a system of bodies is finally p factor which contains all the momenta of all the particles so when p is constant some of these things is constant that means the total momentum remains constant so total momentum remains constant only when the external force on the system accelerated system on the isolated system remains zero so when the total momentum remains con constant p becomes constant your mv factor becomes constant so your change in momentum becomes zero change in momentum is change in momentum with time is your acceleration m into acceleration which is force so so according to the conservation of linear momentum the rule states that when there is no external force acting on a system of several bodies with different masses the total total momentum remains constant that means the total momentum <coughs> of the system becomes the vector sum of the linear momenta as you saw that when i write i want to find the mom, uh, the particles with mass m1 m2 up to mn and the velocities v1 up to vn then the total momentum will be p will be m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus m3 v3 up to mn vn as you know this is the momentum of the first particle so p1 this is the momentum of second particle so p2 this is of the third particle p3 and that is of the nth particle pn so we found that p is the sum of all the momentum vector so this is the vector sum of all the linear momentum all the momentum of the system so when p is constant what we find for a constant the derivative is zero so dp by dt becomes zero when dp by dt is equal to zero we find that the momentum is not changing so d by dt of mv factor is zero that means m dv by dt is equal to zero that means m a is equal to zero that means f is equal to zero so we can also get the same thing in the vice versa way so if the external external force on the system is zero then the momentum becomes constant and if the momentum is constant then also its derivative becomes zero so, so just simplifying we reach at the point f is equal to zero this excludes this concludes the linear of uh, the proof of conservation of linear momentum the principle of conservation of linear momentum from newton's second law we can also find it from the third law just in the next class we are going to do it till then thank you bye